I want to welcome Chef Maki, Scooby Troubles, and Rogitachi on stage. Um, they'll be talking about everything that means to be to be Anon in this world right now and, and everything that they're doing in the world of DeFi. So um, I'll, I'll save the intro for our moderator, who will be Rogue, and uh, I'll ask them to turn on their video and, and unmute, unmute, unmute themselves and uh, get us started. So welcome, everybody. Hey, great to be here. Yo, yo, thank you. Uh, my, oh, there we go. Now my video is looking good. Um, yo, what's up, my fellow Anons, apes, big brains, and all the normal people out there listening. Um, for those that don't know me, I'm Rogatachi. I'm a founding member of Young Capital, um, an Anon DAO, and just a general DGen here in the crypto and DeFi space. Uh, I want to say I'm super honored to be here to moderate this event. Thank you again to ETH Global for letting me hop on the mic here at ETH Online, which is such an awesome event. So with me today, I have two awesome non-panelists that will surely be shaping the future of France before our very eyes. First, I'd like to introduce one of my oldest friends in this space, a man who I admire not only for his talent, but his awesome personality and principles. That, of course, is Sco Scoopy Trubles. Scoopy is one of the founding members and core developers of the protocol Alchemix, an ingenious protocol that leverages DeFi to allow users to take out self-repaying loans that can never be liquidated. One might think it to be magic, but in fact, it's the work of a brilliant team with incredible execution. The second panelist with me today is someone who has done just about as much for DeFi as anyone, in my opinion, a developer who has helped build a protocol that is innovative, ever-growing, and fearless in its vision. This is someone who, the day they followed me on Twitter was the day I knew I had made it and would also need to get my act together and start tweeting things of value because smart people were reading them. I am, of course, talk talking about the chef, OX Maki, co-founder and advisor of Sushi Swap. I'm super excited to have the chance to chat with both of you Anons today. Welcome, guys. It's great to be here. Thank you for the Thanks amazing for that. intro. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> of course, of course. So like you both, I am a non as well, though I'm an non degen, so not quite as glamorous as you as you builders. Um, but I found that being a non has a lot of benefits, especially in terms of privacy and safety. Um, that said, there is one problem that haunts me over and over, which is having to answer the question to the people in my life. What do you do for a living? What exactly is your job? I usually answer with some version of like, oh, I'm in finance or I'm a financial consultant. But the other day, a girl I was talking to was like, yeah, me too. And then started grilling me on exactly what I did. Obviously, I did the only rational thing I could at the moment, which was to turn around and sprint away. But I'm curious, what do you tell your friends, family and strangers about what you do for a living? Like how secretive are you? Do you have a like cover story? We can uh, um, start with you. Yeah, yeah, so with me on this one, um, very few people in my life know um, that I'm Scoopy Triples and what I'm doing. Um, it's just, you know, my immediate family, like my, my wife uh, and, you know, uh, a couple of my close friends who I know, like IRL before, you know, I got into crypto also know uh, who I am. Um, but other than that, um, I just have a pretty good cover story, which is that um, I work as a uh, as a software developer, um, and they asked me what what company. And I actually <laughs> I actually was working for uh, a DeFi protocol uh, as a front end developer before I got into Alchemix. Um, and so I just tell people I work for them. So if they really want to know, but everyone else, you know, who doesn't know or think I work for that company uh, thinks I work uh, just in IT. So, you know. Uh, okay. So you do kind of say that you work in crypto. You're like, oh, well, I work as a, you know, I at least work for a front end developer for, for this crypto, uh, you know. Yes. I just haven't told them that I left that place and started Alchemix. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a minor detail you know? <laughs> i mean I, I just you know don't want people to know you know just yeah. 
right like that i just i think for me it's more like i just don't want people to, to treat me any differently and that's why i'd like to keep it a secret you know because right yeah you know. no, that makes sense uh one of the reasons why i chose financial consultant too is because it seems really boring and so i feel like people don't usually ask follow-up questions and i feel like software developer while it's not <laughs> boring it's more of like it's so general that like people don't really ask follow-up questions so that makes that makes sense yeah what about uh just, what about you maki um it's sort of to you you know like usually i just uh, say i'm in finance and if some people start to quiz me or us i just say that i do hft i mean i read a book like flash boys a while ago michael lewis was pretty good and i was just like oh yeah there you go <laughs> hft trading and uh, it is what it is uh, <laughs> and i think everyone like no one knows about it. What, what is HFT? So they just like give up straight up. Otherwise, like for friends and family, like kind of uh, very close friends and kind of, you know, family members, they kind of know. The problem is, and that's the thing with Scoopy that he is not saying here yet, is that the moment you're going to go to events or like be kind of uh, surrounded by people in crypto, your voice is dark. So it's going to be right. way harder to kind of... Uh, <laughs> to uh, to camouflage or to like just stay hidden so um i had to deal with this uh, not that long ago and basically like someone just told me hey i know you um, <laughs> there is not many people with the same voice that went on laura shin podcast and i was like oh fuck i'm i'm going to run and, you know actually like the person was also laying a hat on so that went well but uh what 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 i found the most curious about is the same anon was uh, was saying uh, for a living was doing absolutely nothing <laughs> and that kind of you know <laughs> I don't know that <laughs> that just stuck with me I was like oh some people are just not even trying anymore <laughs> <laughs> so that was great but uh, anyways yeah at conferences it's another topic I guess right yeah no, I, I get that uh, I'm not sure when I'm gonna actually go to a conference it's been you know this whole corona thing and I I think there was like a recent event where a lot of people ended up getting Corona. And I mean, it just sort of seems yeah. like, you, you know, be this repeating, you know, theme and, you know, I don't want to make it this far and then, you know, get it before I'm double vaxxed and all that stuff, and you know, at the, at the very end. So I'm, I'm just playing it cautious until then. Right. Along with the, the voice docs thing, you know, uh, I uh, host the Goodwill Hunting uh, podcast, uh, Goodwill Yunting, sorry, podcast. And uh, it, me and other youngs hop on and talk to people. And uh, we actually had on like our second episode, one of uh, our fellow youngs got voice docs by someone who worked with him. He just got an email that said like, hey, you sound really like this guy on this podcast. Is that you? <laughs> and he was like, oh, crap, crap, crap. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not much you could do at that point. Um, but it's okay. So kind of along the same vein, I often find myself like wanting to tell friends, family, and even strangers what I do because I find crypto and DeFi so exciting and fascinating. And I think there's so much value that other people can get in their lives from it. Yet I don't want to spend six hours explaining the basics of it to a boomer who will just like call it a scam or a stranger who will follow me home and hit me over the head with a wrench or something. So do you have like IRL people that you talk about crypto with who aren't really in the scene? How do you like kind of balance the excitement of what you guys are building, which is so cool. And also like wanting to be safe or not lose brain cells talking to normies about crypto. Um, when I was really first getting into crypto uh, back in 2016 and 17, I was like, like trying to evangelize like everyone, you know, poor summer child right. I was at the time. And, you know, I almost had a few people get into it, like, you know, back in like December, 2017. And then like, you know, the crash happened after that and the bear market and, you know, people were just like, Oh, how's your crypto doing? And kind of like laughing at me like in 2018. <laughs> so it's like, I've kind of learned not to really talk about it with uh, many people from that, you know, cause you know, God forbid they actually come within the top and then got wrecked um you know that would have been something i would have to live with so i i try not to talk about it with uh you know people you know in my average you know everyday life 
too much. Uh, but a couple of my friends approach me because they know I'm into it and they want to learn more. And when people are like that, like, you know, I'll talk to them and educate them. Um, you know, tell them to stay away from EOS and Cardano. So, <laughs> um, but, and I have a, like one of my friends, uh, he's, he's really into it. And, you know, we talk about it like, uh, you know, uh, pretty regularly, but, you know, other than that, like, you know, I don't really try to mix uh, crypto with uh, a lot of my you know friends in real life. Cause you know, it's not like something people want to talk about all the time. Not everyone's as obsessed with it as we are right i don't, don't want to be the crypto guy you know <laughs> <laughs> what about you maki um i i think you know like it's kind of funny because a bunch of my friends uh and you know like uh, people i know that were asking me about crypto i gave them a small list of things to do like try out like just a uh, take like 500 bucks buy eat and just try all of these these dabs and you know among these dabs there was like dydx and basically like everyone got like a you know like a fat airdrop like not that long ago. and and basically like for some you of them like them literally like yeah for them like a, one of them paid like all of his student loans with it uh-huh. um and kind of you know basically <laughs> was able to make it, uh, quote unquote, for, for them, it's a you know, massive, massive airdrop. And they've been since then, like, you know, like ringing the phone and pretty much like uh, getting <laughs> seriously into it because they just feel like that this is madness. And I told them, yeah, that's just an airdrop. No biggie, you know, <laughs> there is a, <laughs> right, right. it happens, it happens quite <laughs> so, frequently, you know, like, it's I mean, this size, day, this, yeah, the, the size is, is is yes, it's a it's a big one, but anyway, so that kind of uh, motivated them to kind of study or dig dig deeper. Of course, like uh, you know, they can always find uh, someone that will help them in me. But I'm not too much evangelizing anymore um, because people just uh, literally I got banned from a, a few <laughs> for crypto, uh, not crypto, but friend circles because of it because i was talking too much about it so uh i'm quite i'm quite intense regarding uh, crypto DeFi and so on even with my friends like not just with community and with and strangers online so <laughs> anyways um but for the erl part like in in real life um people like just you know you talk about crypto it's always like oh i i've heard about bitcoin and then it's just like they don't push the discussion further and to be honest, I'm not too interested. The only thing is, at some point, I was in a shop. I went to the shop and I strolled with, I think, my sushi cap because I have a sushi cap. And uh, I'm, for me, I'm kind of, you know, hiding in plain sight sometimes. And anyway, um, the sales associate there was just like, hey, I know this logo. Uh, this is sushi. I was like, <laughs> indeed, I love sushi. <laughs> and they were just like, they didn't know. And I was just Little like, did they know. <laughs> but, but, yeah, exactly. It's like, what do I say? What do I do? And then it's like, uh, where did you hear about it? Oh, it got added to um, like uh, Robinhood or like the, the equivalent locally, something like that. And I was just like, oh, okay, cool. And I asked, you know, it, is everyone in the store into crypto? And she said, oh, the whole staff is trading. I was like, no fucking <laughs> way. I was like, this is crazy. You know, you you just walk in a random like right. know, clothing store and she told me like, yeah, there's five, six people here that are like all trading crypto. I'm like, what? Well, I was shocked and uh, I asked what was their uh, biggest holdings and uh, they told me about I think it was like extremely like shitcoin heavy like uh, Elron, Elron something oh beautiful Q- QNT, <laughs> QNT and stuff uh, and, I, and I just told her I said you know uh, I think you know you should uh, consider looking into <laughs> uh, anyway, buy some sushi and I asked her, like, do you know about MetaMask? And she said, no. I said, oh, okay. So we have, like, we have people, investors, or, you know, like, uh, people, you know, dabbling into this space that are not even aware of this yet. You know, they only stay right. in their own little gardens. And uh, that was, uh, yeah, it's just I, I open it because for me, like, MetaMask is, is a, it's kind of a no-brainer. But uh, apparently it's, uh, for some people, like, they don't even want to consider, like, uh, dabbling more into this, like, desktop-wise and so on. So, very interesting to to talk with people that are like uh, exposed but in another way than than us usually 
Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a, that's a hilarious story. Um, so kind of going into the DAOs and governance, one thing I feel like normies in the future might be afraid of or the idea scares them is like trust in anonymous DAOs um, and in terms of government governance. Uh, and I think it's funny because I don't know anyone in Young Capital DAO in real life, and yet I trust them as much as anyone and literally with, you know, my money. So I'm curious, do you guys see anonymity as a hurdle, beneficiary, or non-factor when it comes to trust in DAOs, governance, and generally between people and crypto kind of now and moving forward? Um, I think, you know, like somebody like, like Maki and someone like myself, we have like online reputations built up um, already. Um, and because of that, um, you know, if we do something bad, like, you know, that reputation that we have is going to go down with it. And, you know, that takes a long time to build up. Um, you know, and it's not like any of us could just, you know, switch to a different alt and then, you know, have it be the same as it would be a, as, you know, who we are now. In fact, a lot of people would probably be like, oh yeah, this, this alt is, you know, that scam or scoopy, blah, 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 <laughs> or something like that. So, you know, there, there's, you know, a lot at stake for, for us to be good actors, um, especially, you know, you know, I, I'm obsessed with crypto and DeFi and I can speak for Maki, you know, I know he is as well. And like, why would we want to like banish our, ourselves from the space just, you know, to earn a quick buck or something like that? You know, it's given so much to us. I feel like it'd be foolish, uh, you know, to do something, you know, some heinous act um, abusing, you know, our power. Um, whereas like, you know, in, in our case, I don't, I don't think it's really hurt us. In fact, sometimes being anonymous is, is, is pretty nice uh, in a lot of ways because uh, you do get to keep your privacy, you know, at least for most people. Um, but like if you're like a new person starting out, you know, and you don't have any, you know, following online or credit online, you don't have a relationship so with other people in the space and you launch something and you're anonymous, then I think people are going to be a lot more skeptical of uh, someone like that. Right. Interesting. What are your thoughts, Maki? Um, yeah, I mean, the fact that you shouldn't be trusting anons, that's for sure. Um, I do think, uh, like Scoopy said, like very quickly, like um, short term results for short term gains and short term short sighted people are going to be kind of outed very quickly. I mean, we kind of see it with everything that happened, the rocks on DSC and so on. So in my opinion, like, the true builders and so on are going to be staying for the long-term game. You know, there's like, it's going to be easy to identify in the long run, um, usually like interacting with this anon DAOs and so on. Um, I do think, you know, like whenever like there's a new entrant uh, or you know, participants or, you know, someone that wants to create something new, etc. cetera, um, it's always like there's more scrutiny and, you know, like there shouldn't be any, um, how can I say, like, uh, no checkpoint or no verification of what is happening uh, at the code level. Uh, and then from there, you can move on. Um, there should be, like, checkpoints, you know, like, uh, time locks or, yeah, like, making sure, and, like, admin mm -hmm. keys and multi-sig, et cetera, like, just to make, like, their life more complicated and <laughs> overall, yeah. like, securing kind of the doubt uh, because we don't want to have, like, any other, um, any problems. And then... That is to me the only kind of barrier. Aside from that, I'm pretty comfortable with people like using um, pseudos and kind of personas, online character, whatever. Yeah, I think it's like the culture, you know, of crypto to be pseudonym. And a lot of people do choose to, you know, be public and, choose, you know, rebuild their identity. But, you know, like from the, the beginning, you know, the, the creator of cryptocurrency in of itself was a pseudo anonymous person um, and or persons, um, you know, and I think it's, you know, as long as people like pseudo anonymous, you know, developers and actors, uh, you know, act, you know, with morals and ethics, you know, then I think, you know, it's fine. And I, and I think the more people do that, the better it will be for the space because, you know, there'll be, I wouldn't mind the, yeah, 
I don't trust them less. And, you know, we've seen some very cool example of this, by the way, uh, with uh, Olympus Dow that, you know, kind of sprung up from nowhere and like built a very dedicated right. community. So Alchemix is another one, Sushi. Uh, honestly, like it's kind of a never ending list at this point. Yeah, no, I, to I totally agree. Um, so I think we've talked at length kind of what it means to be a non right now. Um, so let's find out what you guys are doing as a non devs in this space. Uh, let's start with Maki. So we all know Sushi started as an AM AMM, but it's grown to be so much more since then. Sushi is now deployed on multiple chains, has awesome new products like Bento and Kashi, and you've created partnerships with some of the best protocols in DeFi. For either other developers out there or investors looking for the next Sushi, what do you think is the kind of secret sauce to a protocol having so much value growth and development um, in such a short amount of time, really? Um, you know, like in the case of me, when I was involved, like on the day to day at Sushi, um, it was kind of a multi, like one man, one man army kind of type of situation for me initially. Um, you know, it was the one that I was recruiting team. I was the one that was also, um, you know, building a partnership. I was the one getting marketing, uh, investor relationship, uh, even like manning like the discord community uh, manager, quote unquote. So it was kind of a multi-pronged approach um, where like it was also like doing strategy and basically like over time, this kind of uh, grew into a team of, you know, like 24 people, um, even 25, I think now. And basically like just like trying to delegate as much as I can on areas that, you know, people were um, better at and so on until like I felt you know comfortable kind of stepping down because I felt uh, the whole team was, you know, like, tighten it together and basically like uh, able to run the day-to-day -day and myself you know like uh, it's kind of exhausting also being in DeFi like 24 7 so uh, oh, yeah. that was another consideration and um and regardless uh, there's also like many other new challenges that i want to explore so while well, contributing to sushi um with them anyway so i think for finding the net the next uh <laughs> sushi or alchemix you need to have like passionate uh, builders uh, that are going to be, I think, you know, being a crypto native also helped tremendously. Uh, people that know exactly how to, like, you know, what is going to be beneficial for these new protocols. Um, of course, like the technical aspect is always very important, but the truth is it's better to have something that is accessible, that is easy, that is um, friendly on the UI, UX and the onboarding, than something that is revolutionary on the tech side. Um, you know, like, Sushi itself and the AMM, like, is not nothing crazy. It's only like a fork of V2, but we're still, we've still been able to onboard many people that were not kind of used to being LP via, like, you know, incentives or, you know, like just the way we're kind of uh, supporting everyone that just joined our discourse and so on. So there was this aspect that is very important, I think, in growing a product. And then for the next ones, I, from what I've seen, what is like, really working well for bootstrapping these community nowadays is um, a mix of airdrop incentives and then a kind of, a, <laughs> I don't know, like communities that are like almost cult-like or, you know, there's like some, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but uh, there is like this, this, uh, this je ne sais quoi factor where <laughs> people are drawn into it, whether this is with, uh, an emoji where this is with uh, a meme like tree tree or um you know like i've seen lately what i've seen is token mag doing like this kind of gamified governance thing with voting and so on that just like appealed to various um that appealed to various uh communities uh so i think there was like what, 42 tokens that were selected that could basically uh, both for uh, having like a reactor and that created like a lot of attention from these third parties into this project talking about for liquidity and I was just like this is pretty cool way to bootstrap like communities you know like it's just like novel use case um to just grow overall right no absolutely yeah the uh <laughs> bet on memes and cults <laughs> uh but no I, I totally understand and um, you know, I'm just being in DeFi is exhausting. I can't imagine building 24 seven, especially like 
you were talking about with being kind of wearing every hat in sushi early on, you know, that must have been crazy. Um, but let's move to you now, Scoopy. Uh, you and the Alchemix team changed the game with the protocol that provides self repaying loans that can never be liquidated. For me, Alchemix is a paradigm shift because this idea, kind of along with your ideas for the DAO, can be foundational blocks for really infinite possibilities. In what ways is Alchemix aiming to develop its utility for its users and, and DeFi as a whole in the future? Um, yeah, so um, I'll take this moment or this opportunity to talk about V2, uh, which is the next thing that's coming out from uh, Alchemix. Um, so basically right now in Alchemix, uh, you can have one collateral in, one strategy it uses to borrow uh, an AL asset. So for both AL USD and AL ETH, uh, we are using uh, Urine to do that. Um, notably missing um, like for um, AL USD is we only have DAI as a stable coin uh, that can be used as a, a collateral to borrow AL USD. So in V2, that's gonna open up to uh, a number of other stable coins that'll be accepted as collateral. Um, and, you know, you can, you know, think of any of the major stable coins um, and a lot of the up and coming decentralized stable coins, they will um, be accepted as collaterals. And we're also working um, with uh, trying to accept LP tokens, you know, stuff like curve LP tokens, like uh, things that are stable swap and maybe, you know, Trident if you guys are, are ready uh, soonish, I'm not sure when, um, but, and, um, so essentially, if we expand the amount of collaterals uh, that we accept, except for AlUSD, um, and then we also allow like LP tokens to be accepted as well, it's going to allow us to um, offer people uh, lots of different options. And not only will they have like a different stable coins they can put in, um, and in different ways, they will be able to choose from multiple strategies. So they can sort of build their own meta yield aggregator inside of Alchemix by mixing and matching their collaterals across the, or their uh, deposits across different collateral types and strategies. Mm -hmm. um, so they can optimize it for themselves, um, whether that's for maximum yield or for risk tolerance. Um, you know, people can sort of, it's like sort of like a factory to build your own, uh, you know, yield strategy which you can have diversified across lots of different things and then all those positions can be added together to be your aggregate um, sort of balance in alchemics in order to mint out usd um, and that kind of thinking will, will extend to um, al eth and we're also going to be bringing al btc out as well so there'll be you know different types of L, uh, btc collateral different types of eth collateral think like you know stake um stake eth from lido uh, Rocket E things like that would also, you know, be accepted. Um, and then, kind of later on, we're going to be doing like what I like to call uh, alt chemix, which is expanding mm -hmm. our offering of, you know, al assets. Instead of right, right now, we're aiming for the big three: stablecoins, Ether, and Bitcoin. But after that, we'll be, um, you know, trying to find other coins uh, in the DeFi ecosystem in order to uh, bring alt chemix to them. So, you know, <laughs> Maki, there might be an Al Sushi one day. Uh, so that, that there should be, like... there should be, there should be, <laughs> by the way, and just like a small, like uh, intervention here about like this. Um, and that is, I think, overlook a little bit, like treasuries could also use like Al Sushi as a mechanism to basically like diversify their treasure in my opinion. This way they kind of earn yield on it without being quittable and they can like just, uh, you know, like do a, a huge bet on all sushi, uh, get the all USD and basically like buy whatever they need or just take all USD. So to me, that is like super cool. Yeah, we're, yeah. Alt Chemix is gonna be definitely a part of uh, of uh, version 200 going uh, into the four and to the future. We're also gonna be uh, trying to do uh, multi-chain, you know, targeting, you know, L2s like uh, Arbitrum and side chains, you know, like, uh, Polygon. So those are definitely like the ones that we would probably be targeting early on, but wouldn't limit ourselves to just those. Um, so that's going to be part of our plans to expand. Um, and then we're going to be like revamping, uh, you know, the governance uh, 
procedure by having like a, an on-chain DAO that's going to be um, a custom contract that we have. It's going to have some pretty unique uh, mechanisms in it um, that I think hopefully we'll, we'll be getting copied uh, in the future. But yeah. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Oh man, a lot of a lot of great alpha drops. Maki, now you have to show him up. Can you drop some alpha about uh, Trident and maybe some of the cool stuff you're working on in the future? Just in general? Um, I'm right now I'm looking at uh, two things. For Sushi, I can say that, you know, like Trident is around the corner. Um, show you like the contract have been deployed to mainnet, I believe yesterday or so, like uh, Levex posted them um, on social media. So in theory, everything's good. There's only the UI um, that needs to be basically like uh, started, I guess. So that should be as soon as possible. And um, so, you know, like this is gonna be our next kind of release on this front. Uh, besides that, for me, like personally, like I'm just taking this off for like, you know, a few more weeks, I'm exploring kind of a tax efficient uh, sub protocols, like how to make all of this highly tax efficient for users of DeFi and then Omnibridge. So these are kind of the two things. I think there's like a very bad UI on all these multi-chain bridges right now and there's not like one to rule them all. So I'm just kind of trying to study and kind of see what is happening with various of them. Like there is like multiple model right now. Um, some are keeping custody of assets, which is not really DeFi friendly in my opinion. Uh, and that caused like a security risk. Some others are doing like uh, mere LP pools. Um, there, you know, there's a pool on Polygon, there's a pool on BSC and kind of um, that's the way to kind of transit between them. I think that is not, I mean, as capital efficient per se. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of just, you know, like exploring, uh, looking for the next thing, I guess in DeFi, uh, keeping up with a bunch of things. Um, there's like, you know, like, Tokemak and Olympus, like the bond mechanism, I've been very surprised with it. And then Tokemak, like for, I think use case with single side uh, liquidity providing that can be enabled with this is in my opinion, like super exciting. And then like, you know, overall, like uh, just trying to see whatever, like uh, the DGENs are up to these days. So, you know, <laughs> like there's a bunch of things on Avalanche, on Solana, on Terra, um, on the multi-chain level that I haven't kind of paid attention to that I'm kind of, uh, diving slowly into um, and who knows we'll, we'll see what happens I guess at this point it's just like uh, recovering or not recovering but like uh, starting to re rediscover again some of the stuff I might have missed basically right I think that makes a lot of sense and sounds super exciting um, I'll be keeping my eyes out for all of that and any of the other stuff uh, you're building and of course Scoopy V2 is high on my radar and I can't wait for all the uh, exciting developments you, you and the team are, are working on. Um, I think we are at time here, unfortunately. Uh, do you guys want to show yourselves, drop your Twitter, uh, talk about anything you want people to look at, projects, whatever? Um, yeah, I mean, we're Alchemix is currently number two in the uh, Tokamak Core event. So, I mean, if anybody, you know, who has a uh, Toga, you know, hasn't voted yet, We'd appreciate your support uh, to get us your reactor. Uh, that'd be pretty awesome. Um, you guys can find me on social media um, at Scoopy Truples, uh, and it's spelled S C U P Y and Truples. So, but if you search Scoopy with a double O, I think you can find me anyway. Awesome. Maki, anything to drop? Anything to show? Yeah, for for everything uh, sushi related, sushi swap on Twitter or you know zero x Maki, uh, where you can follow my uh, my insight or things like this. Uh, there's gonna be some alpha dropping very soon, so stay tuned. Awesome. And just for me, if anyone wanted to give me a follow for some reason, I'm at the rogue <laughs> underscore Uchiha. <laughs> yes, follow this man. He has alpha. Exactly. Well, uh, Scoopy, Maki, thanks for that amazing conversation. And Rogue, thank you so much for facilitating. Of course, all three of you deserve an equal recognition for uh, everything that you're doing in this ecosystem. And I can't wait to see what everybody does next. So please follow all of these people on Twitter and uh, you know, we'll be sure to bring you on for a future event and go deeper into everything that you're excited about next. So thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you.